Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the next installment of the Geothermal Collegiate Competition webinar series. My name is Katie Smith. I am the competition organizer with the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. Today, we'll, we are joined by Bastian Pu of Sequent, who will be talking about 3D modeling and application for geothermal development and how you can use 3D modeling to compete in or to complete the conceptual model elective module of your GCC entry. Today's webinar is aimed towards students participating in the geothermal collegiate competition. Um, I know we have some people who joined us today who are new to the GCC. So before I hand it over to Bastion, I'm going to take a few minutes to review the program. If you are new to this program, I really encourage you to share the opportunity with your network. Um, there's over $20,000 in cash prizes that will be awarded directly to student teams as part of this competition. Um, just a little housekeeping, this webinar is being recorded and will be made available on the competition's HeroX page next week. Um, I think everyone knows how to use Zoom these days. Uh, we do ask that if you have questions that you put them into the chat box and we will have a dedicated question and answer time at the end of Bastion's presentation. Um, the Geothermal Collegiate Competition is organized by the US Department of Energy and the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. NREL is operated by the Alliance for Sustainable Energy, LLC. Funding is provided by the DOE Office of Energy, Efficiency, and Renewable Energy Geothermal Technologies Office. The views expressed herein do not necessarily represent the views of DOE or the US government. So what is the Geothermal Collegiate Competition? This competition engages students across geosciences, engineering, finance, regional planning, sustainability, design, communications, and other disciplines to reimagine how energy is generated and used. Students assume the role of a geothermal developer, leveraging a geothermal energy resource for a district scale direct use application. Teams will describe why the district, community, or campus was selected, and then analyze information, including the geothermal resource, as well as energy consumption and cost data to participate and participate in stakeholder engagement. Through the Geothermal Collegiate Competition, the DOE Geothermal Technologies Office encourages students to develop innovative solutions for geothermal energy application challenges and build career skills for the clean energy workforce. This is a multidisciplinary event. Um, teams can, must be composed of three or more enrolled students. Um, enrolled students are attending courses at an accredited collegiate institution taking at least one class and pursuing a degree. And we welcome all level students from undergrads through PhDs. Um, faculty advisors are recommended, but not required. And we really do re recommend that teams are multidisciplinary. Key dates for this academic year's competition. Um, I think the most important one here is February 17th at 5 p.m. Eastern time where the elective module progress submission is due. This is a required submission. Um, the teams must submit this progress submission in order to submit a final module or my final submission in April. Um, one thing to note before I talk about the elective modules that we'll be covering today is I wanted to briefly discuss the stakeholder engagement event that will be held by the first, second, and third place teams. As we continue to experience uncertainty around travel and large gatherings due to COVID-19, we are asking that teams please include a note on the team's plan to transition to a virtual or hybrid event in case it is not safe to hold in-person gatherings this summer. Obviously, we're hoping that in-person events will be feasible. However, if this Global pandemic has taught us nothing um, else. It's that we need to plan for all contingencies. So new this year for the geothermal collegiate competition, we've added these elective modules. Teams are asked to com complete two of these four modules, choosing between curriculum supplement, a conceptual geological model, an engineering design, and a project development and solicitation. So in today's webinar, we will be 
focusing on tools that teams can use for the conceptual geological model. So for this model, we are asking teams to create a conceptual geological model through the integration and interpretation of existing data and any additional data collected or acquired during the competition. Table seven in the official rules document outlines the judging criteria that will be used to evaluate these modules and appendix I has additional details and guidance on the requirements for the conceptual geological model module. So today to talk about leapfrog geothermal, we are joined by Mr. Bastian Fu. Bastian is a technical sales advisor in the Americas for the leapfrog geothermal software by Sequent. Bastian holds a master's degree in geology and has published a number of peer reviewed technical papers on geothermal energy project. He's a geologist with 12 years of experience in geothermal resource exploration, evaluation and development, well site, ge well -site geology and 3D modeling. Bastian has completed geothermal resource assessments on numerous projects located in the Americas, Iceland, and the Caribbean. And he's been the well site geologist on numerous deep geothermal wells around the globe, including the Iceland Deep Drilling Project IDDP2 in 2016, and some of the world's deepest geothermal wells in the geyser field in California. So thank you for joining us today, Bastian. Um, I will go ahead and let you share your screen now. And we look forward to hearing about leapfrog geothermal. Thanks, Katie. Let me get set up. Uh, all right. Are we all good with the screen sharing? Yep, looks good. All right. Thank you, Katie, for the introduction. Thanks, thank also, thanks also for getting. Uh, uh, for the invite to join this event and uh, good morning good afternoon to everyone and best wishes for this new year we'll see what 2022 has for us um so i'm going to present today uh a bit about how to do to use leapfrog uh, geothermal uh, i'm going to start with a short presentation and then i will jump into the software directly so uh as uh, katie mentioned i'm the technical sales advisor uh, for sequent uh, for the energy sector and I'm based out of Vancouver in Canada. So what am I going to present today? So first a quick presentation of Sequent, what we do and, and uh, in which industry we work. Um, and then I will jump into directly into Leapfrog Geothermal, which is one of the products that Sequent develops and sells. Uh, I will show you the different modeling tools that exist in uh, Leapfrog Geothermal. Uh, some share some additional resources on uh, if you want to look for more information uh, and also then I will jump into a live demo in Leapfrog Geothermal, show you uh, the capabilities and we will conclude with a, a q and if you have any uh, questions or comments and you would like to know how to take advantage of this uh, software for your project in this competition. So first I will start with a uh, one minute video of introduction of sequent. Where there is uncertainty, we see clearly. We see stories in complex data. And we know that connecting people with the right information enables better decision making. Sequent sees the bigger picture, that it's about now and also about what's next. Because asking why is as important as asking how. It's about the power of technology to reduce our impact on the environment, today and tomorrow. And discovering more sustainable ways of realizing value. It's about seeing a better future through the power of data and supporting businesses to meet these challenges. From complexity to clarity, Sequent. Oh, we're not going 
going for a second time. All right. So have you seen? Have you seen quickly? You seen quickly in that video. Um, we uh, sequent works in different domains. Uh, energy is one of them, and is the one I'm going to focus on today. But we also work in uh, civil, env civil and environment, as well as mining and minerals. Um, for each of these domains, there is a different version of the Leapfrog software, and the one we use in Geoformal is, is called Leapfrog Geoformal, and is uh, the version with actually uh, the more tools available. Uh, we have offices all around the world. Um, Sequent is more than 450 employees at this time. Um, and we have services and support available in different regions of the world here in North America. So I'm in the Vancouver office, but we have offices also in Denver, in Mexico, in Calgary, and in Toronto. Uh, we have a large uh, base of customers in the geophormal industry. You see some of them here. Uh, so it goes from in, uh, research institutes to uh, industrial uh, players, whether they are developers or uh, if they already have power plant that are producing at the moment. So now I'm going to talk about Leapfrog Geothermal. Um, so Leapfrog Geothermal is most of most of all it's a geo modeling tool. So it is used to create uh, geological models. Uh, it interfaces with most of the uh, industry leading reservoir engineering and geophysical software, which means you can import and export in a variety of formats that are compatible with other softwares. And we have a special emphasis on this because we want to be uh, interoperable with as many different products as we can so that our customers can use uh, every, every tool they want. Uh, the goal of Leapfrog is really by integrating all these types of data and models uh, to create conceptual models of your resource. So to see how each of these components that you will put into Leapfrog, how they correlate, how they, uh, especially how you can better understand the reservoir based on all these characteristics. The advantage of Leapfrog is because of the algorithm that's in the back in the code. It's actually very fast and dynamic to create geological models. And by dynamic, we mean that uh, if you have a geological model based on the number of wells and, and data, and suddenly you have data from a new fault that you haven't identified or from a new well that has been drilled, then you don't have to restart from zero. Actually, the model will dynamically update once you integrate the new data in it. This algorithm that's in the back of Leapfrog, um, just very quickly, it's called the RBF for uh, radial basis function, which is a public algorithm. But uh, the specialty of Leapfrog is what we call the fast radial basis function. So it's the same uh, RBF algorithm that considers data that are very sparse and creates use it to create surfaces and volumes. Basically, what it does in the background is that it converts all the data into distances from points. So you see here on the image, there are some values on the wells. And that's how Leapfrog will calculate the best fit for a surface based on the data you provided. Uh, it's a single mathematical function that is very good at for, for geology modeling because it works with uh, data that are not uniform, that can be sparse, it can be far from each other. So it's very good at connecting them together. Too fast. Um, for the little story, um, Sequent uh, actually is from uh, New Zealand. And the reason for that um, is that in 1985, actually a company called Arens was uh, using laser technology, laser scanning technology to create the animated monsters in the trilogy of Lord of the Rings. So uh, and if they were based in New Zealand, that's what the movie was, was made. And in the early 2000s, some researchers starting to look into reusing that technology to create geological models. Uh, actually, one branch after that separated into uh, medical imaging, and one part, uh, one one group created Arrens Geo and the first version of Leapfrog mining using this algorithm. Later in 2012, uh, Arrens Geo released Leapfrog Geothermal, and Arrens Geo became sequent in 2019. So what are the modeling tools in uh, Leapfrog Geothermal? Uh, so first, 
to look at when we use each of these tools, it's important to understand the life cycle of a geothermal project. In each of these part, in, in part of the development of a resource, you have different challenges and you need different tools. So first, when we talk about the discovery, the exploration, the goal is to delineate the resource, to try different hypotheses, and to create a first conceptual model based on some surface data or exploration, like geophysics, uh, or structural geology, structural mapping. And the goal would be at the end to target the first well for uh, exploratory drilling. And then we jump into the second phase. So that's the feasibility study where you're gonna to try to define your resource. Uh, you will have some data from the surf surface that are more reliable, they provide, uh, provided by the, the drilling that you have been doing. And this will allow you to start understanding the distribution of the temperature, uh, better understanding of the, the geological uh, structure and the units present in the subsurface. And you will update your conceptual model with those new data. And you will continue to plan new wells for uh, the development of the resource until you are able to actually generate electricity or extract heat from your wells. And so this, now we arrive in the, in the third part, which is the development and operation of your project. You still have to do more well planning because you might need some additional wells to create more to generate more heat or electricity or to, uh, to, to, to drill make up wells to make up for decline in the reservoir. Um, you're gonna update your conceptual model with all these in data as they are created. And you're also gonna start working a bit more with the reservoir engineering side, which is to forecast the production, the future production of your reservoir based on the data you have with the ultimate goal, which is to maximize the output of your project and, and, and how long it will be able to, to last. So the first type of data you will integrate, uh, first type of data we can integrate are well data. Um, they, I will go more into details into the type of data we can integrate when I go into the software further after this, this presentation. Uh, but basically you can integrate all data from drilling, uh, lithology data, mineralogy data, and all the way online logs, whether they are temperature logs, gamma logs, neutron, neutron porosity logs, uh, televiewer, et cetera. When you create the geological model, you're gonna use some of that data from the wells, you're gonna use data from uh, the surface geology map that was published or that you have created on your field. And you will be able to correlate them together to, uh, based on your interpretation, build the first geological models. You can use cross sections, you can use geological map, you can use all that and work on them together to create that uh, best fit for the geology in, in 3D. These are type of data you can integrate in LeapFrog are geophysical data. It's the same, I will go through some of the types of geophysical data we integrate in LeapFrog when I go into the software. But basically the typical ones are uh, magnetotelerix data, seismic data, uh, earthquake, micro seismicity data, gravity, magnetics, all this you can integrate in LeapFrog to, uh, to, to build your, your models. We have a tool in LeapFrog called numeric models. This is not the same thing as reservoir models. This is called numeric model because it's based on numbers. So think about uh, where you have va numeric values in, in a project. So it, may, it can be temperature data, it can be chemistry data, concentration of certain species, it can be pressure data. And LeapFrog will allow you to create, generate isosurfaces for all these types of data. So for example, here on the right, we see what is a temperature model of one of one field in the Philippines. And you see how these contours allow you to better understand the distribution of temperature in the subsurface. This can be used also for estimation of volumes, which can be very useful when you want to calculate the capacity for generation of your resource. And because one of the biggest challenge in geothermal is to drill the wells at the right place, uh, this is very important in a project. It can, uh, it can sign the end of a project or it can really uh, make a project go forward. Um, so it's very important to plan where you're gonna drill and how you're gonna drill your well. So we have a tool in LeapFrog that's an interactive well planning tool, which allows you to design all kinds of wells already and to run prognosis on them. So if you have a geological model and you plan a well, you can actually, uh, evaluate what will be the depth or like at which depth you're gonna encounter contacts or fault uh, in order to better prepare for your drilling and also to plan the best wells. 
um, in the last phase, once you have a good uh, reservoir model, once you have the fault in place, you have a, uh, numerous wells, and you have a good understanding of the different uh, flow path in the subsurface, that's when you will actually convert your models into reservoir models. The main one being used in, in geothermal, of course, being tough too, but there's, there's other softwares out there like CMG, Eclipse, ModFlow, and FeeFlow, and we integrate those we have a full integration with those different formats in LeapFrog, which means that you can convert your geological model into a flow simulation software, a flow simulation format directly and export it to your simulation software. Some of these formats, you can even import them back, like the top two, you can import it back into LeapFrog to visualize it with the rest of the data. And you can look at the change in, the change in some of the parameters like pressure, temperature, uh, through time. So that's what you see here at the bottom, uh, the two images at the bottom right. So uh, before the production on the left, and then you can see the decline in pressure with time after here, it's actually 15 years. Um, there are some tools that uh, additionally need to do some calculations on your data. Um, some of the work we've done recently was to try to combine many models all together with what has been done a lot uh, by uh, the University of Nevada in Reno, for example, which is the play fairway analysis, um, which is used to identify the most favorable sites for geothermal exploration. Well, we have been looking at doing this in 3D at the project scale. So when you have all this model that I mentioned before, when you have a structural model, geology model, you have uh, information from geophysics, from the well, you can combine all those together in one single model and weight them and that gives you, as you can see on this picture at the top right, what, where would be the best sites where you will have the highest chances of success based on all these elements when you drill a well. Just a few uh, examples of some geothermal projects around the world that have uh, taken advantage of LeapFrog. This is a more labo in Indonesia. Um, they started using LeapFrog 2016 and they built their first temperature models with a few wells, as you can see at the bottom left. And because LeapFrog is dynamic, as soon as they were joining new wells, they will integrate the data into the, into the software and they could see that your temperature model evolved in something different. So actually in what they thought was more of an outflow from the system turned out to be a right uh, just above the, uh, the upflow of the systems, which is an important consideration when you uh, look at a geothermal system. Another example from Japan here, they've been using some seismic data to define the top of the, of the granitoid where the reservoir is located. Um, so we can use different types of formats. And this was used here, as you can see at the bottom image to create a reservoir model for flow simulation as well. Another one that I know pretty well, this is in Iceland. This is the highly shady geothermal field in Iceland where there was a large amount of data from geothermal wells collected uh, of, for more than 50 years that were integrated in one single model of uh, in LeapFrog. Um, and you can see this geological model with the temperature ISO surfaces and how the dikes here, the intrusions related to the rift actually uh, play a major role in the distribution of the temperature. And we can see also at the bottom right um, the resistivity model from Magnetotherics. So all these models together, once they are in the same environment, it was very convenient to plan new wells once you have like all the data in the same place. And this one is a bit more focused on research. So this is the Long Valley Caldera in the US to show you that you can actually build very complex geological models in LeapFrog. So you can see the structural models on the top right with numerous, numerous, numerous faults inside the caldera. And we also integrated the data from USGS, the resistivity model, the empty model to understand what goes on like at greater depth below the, below the caldera and where could be the magma, magma chambers. And you can see all these little dots are all the earthquakes location, which also is very useful to locate, to help locate faults. So this is all a bunch of different data that you can integrate into LeapFrog. Um, just want to share some additional resources before jumping into the software. Um, I invite you to go visit our website. There are uh, many videos of showing our customers. Some of our customers use our product. Um, so here, if you if you 
screen captures from uh, four videos. You have from Reykjavik Energy in Iceland, Contact Energy in New Zealand, EDC in the, in, in the Philippines. And we have a video also about the Frontier Observatory for Research in Geothermal Energy, so the Forge project in Utah, which you might have heard of. There's many other videos and uh, some pretty pictures also of power plants and fumaroles. So if you, if you want to know more about you know the different use of the, the Leapfrog Geothermal software, it's it's good to go check out those uh, those videos on our website. And uh, yeah, well, this is my contact info uh, if you have any question, but we're gonna have a Q&A session at the end also. All right, I'm going to jump into Leapfrog. All right, so this is the interface of Leapfrog. It's pretty simple. You have most of the tools here on the left in what we call the project tree. Um, they are pretty much organized uh, from surface data to all kind of uh, import data, geophysical data, lines and points, and things you can import from other softwares. Um, here is the part where you're going to create new models, and then we have a bunch of export options. So flow models, create scenes, create movie, create cross, create cross sections, etc. cetera. Um, I'm going to go through some of them, the most important to show you a bit how Leapfrog works. I've said a few scenes in advance, so it's easier for me to uh, show some of the data that we have integrated. So this is a simple. Uh, digital elevation model. And you see right away the interest of looking at it in 3D. Uh, you can uh, you can here see here the, the topography and you can look at, you can, inter you can put as many images as you want on top. So he here's an auto photo, but we can also look at a geological map. We can integrate um, a topographic map. So you can visualize all this data and put them directly on the topography. After that, you can, uh, also import any kind of GIS data, so shape files, whether there are uh, roads, this one. So some roads here. I'm going to put the image. So you see some of the roads here in gray. We can look at the rivers, for example. So you can see all this data on surface. Um, you can put these boundaries or any uh, like fault locations, anything that's on surface. And I'm gonna talk a bit about the different types of well data you can integrate. So once you have imported your wells in Leapfrog, it works with a CSV table. So uh, from Excel and you import the location of the well, the the different uh, trajectory of the well. So if it's directional drilling, if it's direction, dir uh, a vertical well, then it's pretty simple to integrate. And then you will integrate all kind of data with other lithological intervals, temperature values, etc. So I want to show you some examples here. For example, this is uh, here we show on the wells, the different casing uh, diameters, the different casing sections in the wells with the producing interval at the bottom here. You can add if you have, if you know where the fluid entry is, you can also visualize them here along the well path, give based on their thickness. Uh, here they are sized based on how much they produce. So those are data you can also visualize. If you have some wired line logs, for example, the gamma logs, uh, you can also visualize them along the well trajectory. Let me just remove the casing. So we can look at uh, gamma values. This will work also for porosity values, for resistivity values on the wells any kind of wire logs, wire line logs. Um, we can look at geology, different geology intervals. So this will be directly from the drilling of the, of the wells. Um, you can look at temperature data. And we can as well integrate fracture from uh, Teleview well logs, so fracture analysis, and you can look at the different types of fractures uh, along the well bore. So this will be more for a structural analysis. So there's a uh, all kind of data that you can integrate from the wells. And the interest here is that the data, the well data are the most reliable source of information for the subsurface. And this is what is gonna help you a lot to build geological model. You can actually build models without having any well data. Uh, if in your project, there is no well data, you only have cross sections from interpretation and geological map. You can also create a uh, geological model just based on that. But here I'm going to show the the different types of information, all that's possible to do. In terms of geophysics, 
I mentioned you can integrate a bunch of data from various formats uh, in conventional geothermal in, in volcanic hosted system. Very often we would have magnet magnetotelluric data, so resistivity models. And this is an example of one that has been uh, inverted in 3D. So you can um, either review the model of the resistivity, the field here is somewhere in the middle, or we can uh, filter to just you can look at the data where you are interested in them and move through it. If I add the wells here, so we can see the wells in the middle. So you can look at the data, how they match all together. Once you have a geological model, you will be able to reuse um, that resistivity information to create your geological model, for example. We can extract isosurfaces from a magnetotelluric model also if, if you need to. Um, another format that you can import, so everything that's on surface, gravity magnetic, um, those data will be generally in, in 2D, 2D maps, but if you have an inversion on the density, they can also be imported. Um, for example, this is a density model that has been inverted from, uh, from Voxy. Uh, which is also a software of, of sequence. Another type of data that's very useful in geothermal are um, seismicity and micro seismicity data. So basically there are points with time information. So you know what time the earthquake happened, whether they are related to um, natural seismicity or to injection in the field or to uh, hydraulic stimulation like they do at the Forge project. So because we have all this information and time, we are actually able to move through the time. So you can filter, you can see how the events are happening. So if you know you were drilling between that and that period, you can probably correlate them to um, the fact that you were disturbing the subsurface. Uh, now, if you wanna look at the natural seismicity, that gives you some very useful information about um, where the faults could be located if you see alignments in those earthquakes. And if you have a major event, you can also see more clearly to what uh, fault they are related or, um, so that's also very, inform very informative uh, for your projects. And another type of data you can look at in the same environment. The main purpose of Flipwork, as I mentioned, is to build geological models. And here's an example of one. Um, I'm gonna show you a bit more about this because this is really the main feature of Leapfrog and show you how it works. So here we see a model that's uh, several units. They are faulted. There are uh, several intrusions in the middle that which are actually not faulted. This is inspired by typical New Zealand geothermal fields. And we have a bunch of wells here and faults stopping on each other. So to show you how this works to build this and, and so you can imagine what you would be able to do for your project, I'm gonna do a little example. So I'm gonna take some, um, some well data. Uh, I'm gonna take my geology, all right? So I got a different unit here and I'm gonna create a surface and a fault. Uh, so uh, I created a new geological model. The boundary is just around the well. So this is where I'm gonna be building my model. When you build a model in Nifrog, it's really made uh, for geologists, if you want. Like the way you will think about your model is gonna be the a in terms of geology, uh, principles. So you will create units based on the type of lithologies there are, if there are deposit, if there are an erosion surface, so an inconformity, if there are an intrusion, um, if there are a vein or a dike, and you will have structural surfaces will be more for metamorphic rocks with folds. You can create vein systems where veins will stop on each other, or you can create a stratigraphy which will be more adapted for um, layered sedimentary basin with tabular units. So here I'm gonna make a, an example. I'm gonna create uh, a simple deposit. So you see between uh, the dark green here, the name bright and uh, the indesity breach in light green, I'm gonna create a surface. So I simply will create a new deposit and I'm gonna use my well data. You can create surfaces from any kind of data. If you don't have wells, you can create it from polylines, which I will show you after where it's basically you manually drawing them. You can use GIS, you can use structural data, you can use points. So that's if you import it from somewhere as a surface in points. 
you can create from an existing surface and just offset it, or you can import a surface uh, that's also if you import it from another software. So here I'm going to use it. I'm going to do it from my well data. So what I'm going to say is which lithology is at the top, which lithology is below, and we see that there is eight contacts with the indesitic pressure. And as simple as that, it will create a surface So now I'm here and I have a surface that matches those data. So this is an interpolation. Right now you see, for example, there's a bit of a difference here, but you can manual, you can adapt those in the parameters. I'm not gonna do it now, but it's it's simple option. Um, so we see here it's matching all this data and we, I will show you what, uh, how manually also you can edit those data. So for example, in this region here, we don't have too many well information. Um, so, this is an extrapolation of the tip of the surface. But if we wanted to modify this, we also can manually. And so if I cut from my model here and I go on the side, I can simply edit my surface with a polyline. And here I have a tool and I'm simply gonna be drawing and say here my surface should go like this. So if I turn around, you will see I draw a polyline here that's not matching the existing surface now. And as soon as I save, this is gonna reprocess. And then now my surface will adapt to, now my surface will adapt to uh, this new polyline I drew. So this is how you can manually edit all your surfaces. You can put as many polylines as you want to make the surface match your interpretation. Leapfrog will do the best match based on the data, but then you can have your own interpretation and change those. If you don't, if you don't have any, well data, for example, you could just build surfaces based on polylines like this. So if you have cross section, you will basically draw those cross those polylines on cross sections and then connect them to create surfaces. And this is how you would create a geological model without any well data. Because I'm aware in many projects, there's not a lot of well data. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a fault and show you how to fault a model. So for this, I'm going to just use, uh, so if you look at my topography here, I'm gonna show my geological map. All right, and I'm gonna use one of these, I'm gonna use this fault here, so you can see it here. Let me put it in red. So I'm gonna use this fault in red here, and I'm gonna draw a fault plane, and I'm gonna cut this surface in two. So the same, in my geological model, there is a special object here called fault system. So I will just create a new fault. And what I have here is a GIS line. So I just go for that GIS line. And just with that line here in the topography, it will calculate a surface. So at the moment it's sub vertical. It doesn't have any information about the dipping, but I can, uh, you can actually do this dipping very easily. Uh, you can give structural information whether they are on surface because you measured the tip of that fault on surface or you have it in a well or because you would just know the tip of that fault from your interpretation. So I'm simply going to edit with structural data. So this is to show you how quick um, you, can, you can build surfaces and faults in leapfrog. So that you know also there is a, a online there is some free training data uh, with data sets so once you have a license uh, you can actually do a training online to learn all the basics of leapfrog so here i put a disk uh, you can it's a structural data so uh, it shows a dip uh, elevation and, and the phase dip here so i can put the dip the angle i want disk here so right now it's dipping 70 degrees so Let's say we want it to dip 80 degrees and then we save. And you're gonna see the surface will automatically adapt. And you see that now that surface is dipping 80 degrees. And if I wanna cut that unit, I'm just gonna say now this, uh, this fault is gonna be activated. So it's gonna cut into the, on both sides, it's gonna cut into two blocks. So I activate that fault. And then you're gonna see that this will divide my surface in two parts. 
and I have in parts on the right and I have a part on the left. Then you can it create an offset by based on the data, but then you will be able to also add polylines if you want to change the offsets of the fault. So this is how you build surfaces in Leapfrog, and then these surfaces will be used to separate volumes. Here I only created one surface, but you can create surface for each of them. And then this is what is being used to create the different volumes. And the result will be that geological model that I showed you earlier. After a bit of work, this is the kind of models you can get. Um, I mentioned in the in, during the presentation of uh, on the PowerPoint that we also build numeric models. So it's another tool of Leapfrog. Um, you build, it's using the RBF uh, algorithm and based on temperature data, for example, um, if you remember, I showed them earlier. So those are the temperature data. Based on those temperature, you can create ISO contours and Leapfrog will automatically create ISO surfaces. Um, the type of ISO surfaces. So here are examples of ISO surfaces. So based on those wells, it will create surfaces. And I can go through them. And this is the same as the geological model. You can actually go here and um, modify manually. So because there's not so much data in this area, you could also add manually some data or you can add a heat source at the bottom and you will automatically modify and adapt all the ISO surfaces with the new data integrated. So it's, it's not once the software calculated the best fit, it's not stuck there. You can actually manually modify it as much as you want to fit your interpretation. What's uh, interesting to do also when you want to see how different models work together is you can, for example, if you have geological units of fault and you have a temperature model, you can project the temperature on those objects. So here you see the temperature distribution on the faults. I'm going to remove the transparency. So you can see that you know in this region at the fault intersection, for example, there is higher temperature, which makes it a good target for drilling because faults plus heat mean, means there is going to be some permeability as well. Um, and you can also see here in the basement, the distribution of the temperature. So this is the first kind of um, uh, correlation you can do between, between your models that would not be possible outside of 3D. You can combine all these models together. Um, and, and this is what at the end will help you to find the best, the best target for uh, your trading. When you want to build a conceptual model, for example, you will have to choose what are in each uh, of these information, what is important to you, what is important for the geothermal system that you're trying to understand. So typically we will be interested in a clay cap, which means we have a, a, a low resistivity area. So it will be above the reservoir and that's what was extracted from the empty here. We want to look at the faults. We want to look at the temperature. Uh, I'm going to put the temperature on them. The temperature distribution on your faults. So just with all the few data you are able to integrate from your project, you can already see, um, extract the information on, on, on how the fluid could be circulating in the surf surface. Where is the heat? Where is the possible heat source? Where is the, what is that clay cap at the top that's uh, sitting the top of the reservoir? If you are in a sedimentary context, you will be looking at you know, which units are the most porous, um, you know, where are the temperature, where, are the, where is the basement, where is it fractured? So it's not only for a volcanic system, you can actually model any, anything you want. For those of you who are uh, also working on uh, flow simulations, um, so you can, um, we have these flow models here. So you can export from Leapfrog your geological model into different formats. Um, the one I'm going to talk here mostly here is TOF, which is the one that we see more often in geothermal. And from the geological model you saw earlier, you can create a TOF2 grid like this. When you create that grid, you will define the size of the blocks in each direction. And you can also refine the size of the blocks in the center. 
The different colors you see here correspond to the folds because uh, folds have different characteristics than uh, liturgical units. And it also selects in a different color the fault intersection, which where the parameters, the, the primarity might be different than just a single fault. So because leapfrog is dynamic, every time you're going to modify your geological model that I showed you earlier. So if you have a new well and new, with new information about the contacts and the depth of those contacts in the wells, then your geological model will update automatically, which means that this reservoir model will also update automatically. So you don't have to restart everything from zero. So once you have all the different uh, blocks here with the different uh, lithologies of faults, you can also attribute all the parameters um, for each of these uh, units of fault. So the density, the porosity, the permeability, the conductivity, uh, the specific heat. So you can define all these parameters, those input parameters for uh, uh, your flow simulation. And you can define a lot of the parameters also for uh, the number of iterations, uh, the time per step, all these uh, are coded for, for TOF. And when you will export this, it will directly code it into a TOF2 input file, which can be open in TOF2. Once you run your, your, your forecast, you always start matching and then you forecast into TOF2, you can re-import the results in Leapfrog. And I'm going to look here at the pressure. So this, for example, the pressure model. And if I get in the middle where my field was. And I can move through time to see the changes in pressure. So you might see here something quite light. So you see the changes, and this is due to production with uh, pressure decline in the reservoir. Obviously it's something you don't want too much of. If we look at another parameter, for example, uh, the gas saturation, which pretty much shows where is the liquid phase, where is the vapor phase in your reservoir. So if I filter to see only the vapor phase, you will see also that with time and pressure decline, of course, then you're gonna have some flashing happening in your reservoir and your amount of steam will increase on in this part of the reservoir. So this is the kind of result you can also uh, bring back into Leapfrog after running your simulation in TOF2 or any of the other flow simulator. For those of you who want to, uh, for example, export cross-section for your reports or uh, for presentations, you also have a tool in Leapfrog that um, allows you to create cross-sections. The way it works is you will select, so if I put my geological model and you will select in your geological model um, where you want to do a section. So you just place it in 3D as a plane with a back and a front. And then you'll be able to edit uh, on the on the page the the legend and different objects you want to see on it. So you can have your geological model, and for each of them you can choose um, the different the colors. You can change. You can add some symbols, etc. You can add a location map. You can add some location information in the scale, and this will be able to export as PDF or even as a, a editable format for uh, Adobe softwares. Once you have created a layout like this one, you can copy it on other sections. Um, if you move this section or if you copy it or if you move it uh, like this, then automatically it's gonna reprocess this section. So he's reprocessing the section right now. And my, my layout here, when it will be ready, will be uh, will now be with this new location because I've changed it. I'm gonna give you a few seconds for that. Now it's evaluating the geological model on the section. And it's done. So now I can go to my cross section. And it's the same layout, but now it's at a different location. So different wells, different folds. Uh, 
uh, if we go back here, we can also create videos. Um, so if you have a scene, like you've seen, I've been using scenes that I saved. So for example, this one, if you create different scenes, uh, this is one of them. If you create different scenes, then you can actually uh, use that to create a movie. So you would put scene after scene, pretty much like Windows uh, Movie Maker. You put all the scenes and you put trans transitions in between. So similarly to a PowerPoint. And then all this all together, when you, it will create a movie. I'm not sure here we'll have the bandwidth to use that, but uh, it will, you can make it turn around, you can zoom in, you can uh, uh, make a slicer move inside the video. And that's a pretty cool rendering for a presentation as well. I think those are the main elements I wanted to show. Uh, one last thing. This is a, when I mentioned this uh, play fairway analysis in 3D, this is uh, usually using this tool called the block model. The block model basically is, uh, so you create a block uh, divided in a number. You can change the size of those little blocks and then you can evaluate any of your models because LeapFrog works with surfaces and, and volumes. We don't work on grids, but you have the possibility to project them after that on grids. So on this block, for example, if I want to show my geology, this is what it would look like. Uh, the advantage of this is that you can actually export it in a table X, Y, Z geology. Um, if you have the temperature on it, it's the same. You can export it as a table uh, X, Y, Z temperature. But the other advantage when you have so many models here is that, uh, for example, we have model distance to faults. So we see how far we are from faults. When you have all this model together, and this is what we do with this 3D play fairway, uh, you can actually do calculations on them and combine them together. We, there's actually a full presentation on that on our website if you look at the videos. Um, but then you can use, you can attribute values if those are uh, categories. So like, where is it most likely to be favorable for geothermal? And you can do it for uh, many different um, information for the temperature. So you attribute values, index values, based on uh, the resistivity or very high resistivity, then, you know, attribute some, some score, some index. And at the end, you will calculate calling back all these uh, parameters and attributing weights. This is what will give you A favorability index. So when we mix them all together, um, we have this value from zero to one. And you see that the higher the value, the smaller the volume, and those are probably the most two prime blocks here in this area. But this is looks like the most favorable where most of the parameters are actually matching and favorable. If we look at them in relation to our geology, you will see that obviously this is related to fault intersections. And um, it's also related heavily on uh, temperature. So if we look at uh, the high temperature area, see that this is the area where the high temperature, but temperatures are high here, but it's not so favorable. Maybe there's some other parameters that are not so favorable in this area compared to this area. This will be very useful to plan a, a, a well after that. Um, when you plan a well, since I got maybe a few more minutes, um, the well planning tool. Um, okay, well, I'm just going to plan the well. I'm going to plan a directional well that will reach this area here. Um, Fortunately, it does a very big window here, which is quite, it's better to use two monitors when you use this tool because it will go, will stay here. But we're gonna select a location on surface. So we're gonna put a well pad here, and then you're gonna build your wells by section. So the first section is gonna be called, which is the vertical section of 500 meters. So you can see now my well here, 500 meters of vertical. Now I want to reach this area. You have different ways to build the wells, but I will select the easy one. 
I will create another section after that. And I will uh, build an angle and then I can just select my target. And automatically it will adapt. It will make a well go to that target. And then you can adapt which rate you are building the angle in your well. So now my well is going to that target. I can decide to go a bit down here. Then after that, I can add another section that keeps the same angle and it will go for 500 meters more. And now we're gonna see the well. So this well, it's smaller, is going uh, inside this area of high favorability. Now, what can I do with this well design? I can also evaluate what will be the different lithologies I will encounter and what would be the expected temperature at the bottom. So if I go in my well and I evaluate on it, I'm gonna evaluate my geological model and I'm going to evaluate my uh, temperature model. Good example every 10 meters. So this will, this will use the models I built previously and it will project them on the well. Okay, it's gonna take a few seconds. Okay, so now this well, instead of just doing the thing as a single, I can see what would be the geology on it. And I can also see that in a table. So geology. So this would tell me where I'm expected to encounter the, the contacts to the next lithologies. Or I can also look at the temperature that is expected in that well. So we see that at the bottom, it's calculated that temperature should be around 340 degrees based on the data from the other wells that I've used. And I can also visualize that temperature on the well. And you can change the design of your well and it will automatically reprocess everything to adapt those values to the new wells. Um, you can also access, um, export from here a drilling plan, which will provide all the information that usually are required for uh, tuning in by training engineers. So with the TVD, TVDSS, uh, so true vertical depth, true vertical depth subsurface, northeast, and east-west deviation for each of the uh, intervals, the build-up angle, uh, the dog leg severity, and then you have X, Y, Z coordinates at different points also. And this can be exported to be used outside of LeapFrog as well. All right, I'm gonna be open to questions for now. Let me go back to... Where is the chat? Great. Thank you so much, Bastion. Um, yeah. This was a great presentation. And I know that the students are very excited about the potential for using Nate Frog in their GCC submissions. Um, so just because we did already receive the question earlier in the chat, um, in order for teams who are participating in the geothermal collegiate competition, to receive a free trial license for the LeapFrog software. Um, I ask that you email um, our general geothermal collegiate competition email and then CC myself and Bastion. Um, let us know what university you're associated with, what your team name is, and we will work to get a trial license all set up for you. Um, Bastion, it looks like we have our first question that came in on the chat already. So okay. does, Leap, does LeapFrog allow us to do uncertainty analysis and to generate probabilistic forecasts? Um, there's no uncertainty modeling in LeapFrog. Well, been working a bit on that. You can create different models and um, then mix them together to, well, that would be mostly for structural, like fault uncertainty, you know, like um, what's the deep of the, maybe I should share my screen again then. Okay, um, it's something we are currently working on. And with a recent, there's actually a new company that just joined Sequin that specialized in uncertainty. Um, 
but we can you can create models that will be, for example, like fault uncertainty about where is the location of the fault. Um, but there is no statistical methods at the moment. This is pretty much static model um, that doesn't let you do static like probability analysis. Um, so the yeah, I would say the answer is not yet, but we are working on it. Great. Uh, the next question that we've had come in is Leapfrog Geothermal able to import and export models with Petrel? Um, the best way, so we import uh, Petrel deviation files, so well data from Petrel. Uh, you can export surfaces in ASCII format from Petrel to open them in Leapfrog. We don't recommend to do it because what's very important in Leapfrog is the dynamic aspect, so that when you integrate new data, it actually um, re reprocess the models. So if you import a model from Petrel, then you're going to be stuck with a static model that you won't be able to modify. So we encourage usually um, our users to recreate the models in Leapfrog um, using some data that they imported from Petrel. So mostly like well data and then try to recreate that model in Leapfrog. I have converted models from Petrel to Leapfrog after that, but I find it so much more useful to just rebuild the model in Leapfrog because there's so much more you can do after on the models if they are dynamic. Great, thank you, Bastian. Um, so besides tough models, does Leapfrog accept CMG models? Yeah, um, so in the current version I have here, uh, this is, uh, because it's gonna be released in the next version at the end of this month. And you will be able to export to CMG, uh, the three types, the stars, IMAX, I don't remember the third one, and to Eclipse format, yes. Uh, so just be patient. I think it's planned for the end of January release. Great, do we have any other questions from the audience? Please feel free to put them into the chat box. Um, I am dropping the link to the competition's Hero X page into the chat for anyone who is new to the competition. This is where you can find their official rules and sign up to participate. We do have an additional three webinars planned as part of this series on January 21st at 1 p.m. Eastern. We will have a direct use system design webinar with Dr. Kunrad Beckers from the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. I've dropped the registration link into the chat. February 1st, we will have a webinar at 1 p.m. Eastern on the overview of environmental re regulations and permitting for geothermals. And on February 10th, we will have a presentation on the GeoReport SEAT tool, which is the socioeconomic um, and accessibility tool, which has recently been upgraded to include heat as well as power. So I've dropped the registration links for all three of those courses into the chat. Um, I don't believe we've had any additional questions coming yeah, through. Katie, just one thing, yes. actually. Uh, I mentioned that we have some uh, training online. So uh, when you access Leapfrog, you need to create what we call a sequent ID, and it gives you access to this page called My Sequent, which is pretty much the portal, your own portal with, with your data. Um, and there is a learning section here with online learning. And if you filter by product and you can look for Leapfrog Geothermal, uh, there is a bunch of material accessible here to learn how to use Leapfrog. Those are uh, pretty interactive. Some are videos and we share data sets and you can go through all these different modules about importing well data, creating a topography, you see all the basic stuff. And some of them are actually more advanced to create temperature model and geological model. So um, this is something once you get access to that license for your project that is pretty useful to go through to learn the basics. Uh, very quickly. I think the whole module takes about 10 hours to complete and it will get you started right away. 
Wonderful. We do have a question in the chat. Um, yes, this recording will be available on the competition's Hero X site. Um, we will post an update. So if you are following, as soon as it's ready, if you are following the challenge, you will receive an email at that time that the recording has been posted. So if you are not already following the Hero, the Geothermal Collegiate Competition on Hero X, I do recommend that you do that. Um, again, if you are a student participating in the Geothermal Collegiate Competition and are interested in um, the using LeapFrog as part of your submission, please reach out to myself, Bastian, and the Geothermal Collegiate Competition email address, and we will work on getting you all set up. Um, the offer for the trial license is for current participants only. Um, however, everyone is welcome to follow the competition to get additional information, et cetera. And uh, I mean, for people who are not part of the of the competition, they can also always email me directly. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Bastian. We really appreciate you taking the time to chat with everyone today and show everyone the functionality of, of LeapFrog. We look forward to our continued relationship with Sequent moving forward. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, everyone, for uh, attending. Have a wonderful day.